thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television, live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan, and our top stories in this edition of the news, Nigeria's Federal High Court rules, Sisiku, Ayuk, Tabi, and other Anglophone leaders being detained in Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, in connection to the deepening Anglophone crisis, be sent back to Nigeria. The court condemned the deportation of the leaders who had asked for asylum in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and out of the country, Algeria's, Algeria's veteran president Abdelaziz Bouteflika defies protesters and confirms he will be running and seeking for another term of office in the presidential election. Protests have been going on in that country, uh, notably concerning the decision of Abdel Futa, or Abdelaziz Bouteflika to run again in the presidential election. Thanks for staying with us in this edition of the news on Equinox Television. The Federal High Court of Nigeria has ruled that Sisiko, Ayuk, Tabe, and the other Anglophone uh, leaders who were arrested in that country and brought back to Cameroon and are being detained in the nation's political capital in connection to the Anglophone crisis be sent back to President Muhammadu Buhari's uh, country. And the court condemned the uh, deportation as illegal. They had asked for asylum before they were arrested and brought back to Cameroon. Details in this report compiled by Fomi Armstrong Sander. The decision was handed down by the Federal High Court in Abuja on Friday, March the 1st, 2019. The presiding judge ruled that Sisiko Ayuktabe and 56 others, according to the case filed, be returned to Nigeria. The court's decision, which upheld their status as refugees, demanded the federal government to ensure the return of 57 deportees to Nigeria. The court's ruling within Nigeria's Fundamental Rights Enforcement Procedure of 2009 revealed that the fundamental rights of Ayuk Tabe and Co. were violated, and as a consequence, each of them arrested in Nara Hotel in early January 2018, be paid 5 million naira as damages. The court also ordered that 200,000 naira each be paid to 47 others arrested in Gembu Taraba State and deported to Cameroon, indicating that they were not sent to Cameroon in a due process. The court's decision, according to a lawyer defending leaders of the so-called Amazonian movement, is based on Nigeria's constitution and the United Nations Convention of Status of Refugees of 1951, Articles 32 and 33. Sisiko Ayuktabe and nine others were arrested in Nara Hotel, Abuja, Nigeria, on Friday, January 5, 2018. They will later be transferred to Yaoundé in a process that has remained controversial till today. They are currently being accused of terrorism and other charges in a court case which is ongoing at the military court in Yaoundé. And Mamadou Mouta, he is the first vice president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM political party, has said the present regime, that is the Bia regime, cannot solve the Anglophone crisis uh, simply because they have failed over the years. And the way the crisis is being uh, managed by the Yaoundé administration is not going to produce any positive fruits as far as putting an end to the ongoing killing, destruction of properties in the northwest and southwest regions of the country are concerned. He was speaking to us in verity and fast yesterday on Equinox Television. We shall be coming back to some of the things uh, that is said in the context of that program in a report compiled by Innocent Azi. But first, we'll go over to Kumba in the southwest region of the country where traditional Traditional rulers of the Bafo people are taking uh, measures to ensure that what happened at the Kumba District Hospital that was set ablaze recently should not happen again. They were on the incident scene 
in, over the weekend. For me, or rather, it's man, you can give reports. After the arson attack on the Kumba District Hospital last February 11, 2018, the custodians of the Bafo tradition were in the hospital to cleanse the vicinity. The exercise that was done in the presence of the senior divisional officer for Meme Division, Ntundong Shambalin, saw the traditional council members killing a goat to cleanse the hospital. Do a thing like this. That's why when the hospital was burned, we took time to ask our ancestors, this thing has happened, what should we do? So most of you were doubting, the population was doubting what has happened that the people who have that town have not reacted to what happened in the hospital. No, we were waiting. We were waiting. They gave us a sign that we should do this. What we have done, it is cleansing that such a thing in this Kumba will not happen again. The brief event ended with the custodian of the Bafo tradition moving around the hospital with the blood of the slain goat to cleanse a health edifice that has been crippled partially since it was burnt last February 2019. <laughs> Two suspected bandits were killed earlier today at the central market in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, while five others have been uh, detained at the territorial gendarmerie of, uh, at the, the Valley Beseke in the Douala 1 municipality. Manjikan Gebri has the details. Traders at the central market in Cameroon's economic capital woke up with shock and consternation as they met bodies of alleged bandits who were killed. Reports say the two attempted stealing from a store but were caught by the population who administered them snake beatings until their death. The arrival of the officials of the gendarmerie unit of Nkululun was just to transport the lifeless bodies to the mortuary. <laughs> Elsewhere, there were five in numbers who were arrested by the elements of the gendarmerie this weekend. Itom, alias transporter, 45 years of age, was the oldest amongst them. Basum Buli, 39 years, Bia Christian, 26 years, Bilong Uri, 24 years, and Peku Ramon, 22 years, the youngest, were accused of breaking into an electronic shop at Bonamusadi and making away with phones, computers, and internet modems. While investigations continue, they have been kept behind bars. Still at the Gendarmerie Brigade, after the officers received complaint about the disappearance of a Toyota Avensis, upon investigation, the vehicle was recovered, but the thief managed to escape while his wife was arrested and kept behind bars until his husband resurfaces. Wild flames have consumed a section of the Ligijo market in Cameroon's political capital. Yaoundé shops, coal stores and warehouses went into flames last night. It is the third fire incident recorded in that market and the first was in, on the 11th of February 2017 and the second on the 4th of March 2017. The inferno has been blamed on poor electrical connections in that market. Support staff of the eight state universities in the Republic of Cameroon have downed their tools over some applied which government has been tiring to solve, notably concerning their salaries. Many of them are paid meager salaries which cannot help them put food on the table, not to talk of taking care of their children, and they are complaining over this situation, indicating that if government does not provide solutions to their plight, they will continue with their strike action. And we have details in this report by Imakule Fogwe. They are support staff of the University of Douala. Solidarity, 
their colleagues of the other seven state universities have equally downed their tools for the same reason. On their placards, they are demanding for the application of Article 23 of the 2011 Presidential Decree concerning the advantages of personnel. If we are out today, it is because most of our rights as support staffs are being violated by this pre uh, present regime. When I talk of this present regime, I'm making reference to vice chancellors and rectors of Cameroon State University because we have noticed that any decree, be it presidential decree or prime ministerial decree or any law that accords some certain advantages to support staffs, those laws are being relegated to the background as far as support staffs are concerned. Many of them are complaining of the menial salaries paid to them which is a total contradiction of the Prime Ministerial Decree of 2014. A Prime Ministerial Decree number 2014 slash 2217 slash PM of the 24th of July 2014. This Prime Ministerial Decree increases the minimum wage that is supposed to be received by any, every worker within the nation to the sum of 36,000 270 francs but up till date that is almost five years later can you imagine that a support staff that has been recruited on category one echelon one still has as basic salary 25,087 francs it is very deplorable it should be noted that the strike action was announced way back on the 28th of November 2018, but the authorities concerned gave a deaf ear to their demands. Many persons have been injured in Algeria in anti-President uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika uh, protests going on in that country. Hundreds of thousands of persons have taken to the streets to protest against his decision to seek for another term in office. And the country's veteran president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, has defied uh, protesters to confirm or by confirming that he will run again, but says he will not serve a full term. He is 82 years old. Details in this report by Euronews. Outside the Constitutional Council in Algeria, it's reported signatures supporting President Abdelaziz Bouteflika's candidacy is being handed in. But according to the head of the election commission, all candidates must submit official papers in person. It comes as hundreds of students continue on Sunday to protest against the government urging the president to step down. There was heavy police presence around the council building and 10 minutes walk away, officers stopped people from leaving the college campus. The demonstrations are the largest turnout in 18 years, which started 10 days ago. Outside the Faculty of Medicine, hundreds wave the Algerian flag and shout. Bouteflika suffered from a stroke in 2013 and has not addressed the protests against him. Here he is making a rare appearance, inaugurating a renovated mosque last April. Swiss media say Bouteflika is in Geneva receiving health checks. On the week. As tens of thousands of protesters across Algeria demand their ailing president steps down, dozens of people and 50 police officers were injured. That's according to health officials. The demonstrations were against Abdelaziz Bouteflika's bid for a fifth term. The Minister of Interior visited those wounded in hospital. A 60-year-old man died during the march of a heart attack, according to authorities. <laughs> We are here to investigate the death of the citizen Hassan Benghedha. May Allah's mercy be upon him. We present our condolences to his family. It's the largest anti-government protest for eight years. According to officials, 45 people were arrested. Meanwhile, Bouteflika has changed his campaign manager ahead of an April election. That's it for the first part of this newscast. Talking Point is coming up next.
we are receiving a legal mind, Barista Tamfu Richard, member of the Cameroon Bar Association and equally member of the Nigerian Bar. Barista Tamfu Richard, you're welcome. Thank you, Jonathan Babila. We just watched images of Algerians who are on the streets protesting against the decision of President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to stand again. What's your take on that? Well, it's really a regrettable situation when you see how African leaders want to do everything possible to stay in power. That's somebody who has self his country and the, his present health condition doesn't permit him to continue with another mandate. We all saw him on a wheelchair and still trying to, to stay in power. I think uh, Africans really have a problem and the best we understand that you cannot serve your country up to the point that you become an issue to it, then the better. Because I don't see why after having given all to your country, instead of you stepping down and allowing some other person to, to take over you becomes a problem in Africa. We should follow what obtains in other democratic countries like the US where when a president leaves power, he becomes like a normal citizen. I think if we Africans, we, we try to copy that example, we'll have better days. What is happening in Algeria today? Is it speaking to Cameroon? Yes, I, am, I appreciate their citizens who are conscious. You have seen some of them saying, going to the street to say, we, we disagree with this. And during their protest, you see none of them has been arrested. It has been ongoing, I think, for uh, more, than, more than a week. You see there have been no arrests, there have been no arrests, showing that uh, there they respect at least the rights of some public liberties, for example, the rights of manifestation. They are in complete disagreement with uh, the present president to, to just take another mandate, seeing his hurt conditions. That's why I had to see them going to the street to, to denounce what is about to happen. Right. So I really appreciate the consciousness of the, the citizens of Algeria. All right, you're a legal mind, member of the Cameroon Bar Association and equally member of the Nigerian Bar. And the High Court, the Federal High Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is demanding that Sisiku, Ayuk Tabe and the other Anglophone leaders who have been detained in Yaoundé in connection to the Anglophone crisis should be sent back to Nigeria. What, how, what explains this? Um, decision by the Federal High Court of Nigeria. Yes, I would first of all like to say that uh, the decision, they did that decision or that ruling is not yet final. I would really love it to, to be a final judgment, to really see how Cameroon is going to, to, to behave because Cameroon and Nigeria have judicial corporations and, or, as well as other corporations. We all saw what uh, transpired or what was questions that came up when uh, Ayuk Tabe and the rest arrived here on the 29th of January 2018. People were questioning that it could not be possible because we could not understand how people who fled from their country and trying to, 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 to seek international coverage because they were in Nigeria as refugees that were trying to, to be under the umbrella of the international law, of a sudden were just deported to Cameroon and being uh, handed to the judiciary. I think that judgment really puts to question the judicial cooperation that exists between Cameroon and Nigeria. Is, I, is I know. The, is the Federal Republic of Nigeria under fire for violating international law according to uh, what you just said now? Yes, of course. Nigeria has its domestic laws and as well as international legislations with respect to the status of refugees. I think. Cameroon and Nigeria are signatories to UN conventions under the refugee laws and it is clearly stated that uh, you cannot send back somebody who is running from, a country, from his country for maybe eminent threat of life or whatsoever uh, crimes and you decide to, rep to, to deport him that way. I think Nigeria has shown that yes, actually it has breached its international obligations as well as its Nigerian law and that there was a way for it to remedy the situation. So that judgment just comes in to, 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 to wipe out what uh, was, was done and I really appreciate the courts of Nigeria to have really given a, a good legal position on that without any fear. But, that, but this decision is coming. Uh, at the time when the military called in the nation's political captain, Yaoundé, in the last hearing, uh, rejected uh, 
apparently rejected what the defense lawyers of Sisiku Ayuktabe presented as documents, so proofs to show that they were refugees and said they were going to be tried as Cameroonians. So in this uh, context, can this uh, request by the Federal High Court of Nigeria prosper? We all know that the trial in Yawunde is a political trial and there are a lot of violations. The law is not being respected in the first place. So I don't understand how people or people or persons will be under refugee status and you decide that you rule that you have jurisdictions, a jurisdiction to try them. No. I think when people acquire refugee status or are being asylum seekers, they are under the protections of international law. And should it and it should even be a certain that the offenses for which you want to even try them, okay, the offenses for which they are to, to stand trial in your own day, uh, they have not been committed in Nigeria. They are allegedly being committed in Cameroon when they were not there. So uh, a lot of things are really not clear with respect to, to, the, to the legal procedure that is to, to take place. So I don't see, I don't see why the court in Yaoundé have to assume jurisdiction over people who are refugees. And even after Cameroon have signed, ratified international agreements which says that civilians should not be tried before military courts. You see that if Cameroon consists, uh, insists in assuming jurisdiction over to try refugee persons, you will see that that is a cross breach not only of its national laws and even international laws. So I don't really see why the Yaoundé the Tribunal will, will have to reject or assume jurisdiction over people who are before them on as refugees. It is not disputed. They received documents that uh, these people standing before us were refugees. How then come do you have to say you want to try them? But, but the question many are asking now is uh, with regards to uh, what is at stake, notably the interests of two countries, Cameroon and Nigeria, and with regards to the functioning of the Cameroon government, with regards to the system in place in Cameroon, uh, can the Nigerian government yield to the request of the Federal High Court by... Like I said, know, I said Cameroon and Nigeria have judicial corporations. That's why you see, I for one, I was trained up in a Nigerian law school and I'm able to practice here in Cameroon. So if there are some judicial corporations between the two states, and which I know because in Cameroon, there is a law in 20, uh, 2007 on how to enforce foreign judgments. If that judgment at the Federal High Court becomes final, it is obligation of that court of Nigeria to make sure that her decision has been executed. So if that decision is served on the authorities of Cameroon, I think and I strongly believe that they will have to abide because Cameroon and Nigeria have judicial corporations. If you pass a judgment in Cameroon, we can as well also execute in Nigeria. So if the decision has to come final, I think Cameroon government will only have to to, to, to apply or to execute itself with respect to what has been said. What are the legal backings that Nigeria can use to compare Cameroon? No, to, the only to legal set back Sisiku no. and the others. The Nigeria. only legal backings will have to will, will, will also the, 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 the legal backings will have to also deal with a lot of international agitations. If that judgment, for example, is served on the United Nations, it serves on all the the African Union and maybe the United. Uh, Nations commissions for, for refugees, self on all those bodies. I think without international pressure, we will come to realize that yes, Camus will come to realize that actually we breach international laws and there is it's time for it to for us to remedy the situation because it's, it's, it's surprising that you will be signed you will be signed you will, be, you will go and sign or ratify international agreements with other parties and at the same time you breach it. I think that judgment will have no difficulty in seeing it being enforced. It is a judgment. Cameroon has judicial cooperation with Nigeria. I think the only thing that is remaining is for it to be executed when once it becomes final. But uh, for now, it has not yet become final. So we will have to wait for it to become final before now it can be served to the Republic of Cameroon for, for execution. This is apparently one of the major challenges that is coming up on the table of President Muhammad Buhari shortly after his uh, re-election. Yes, exactly. You are very correct. Well, I, know, I know that it has not always been easy with uh, Buhari to, to respect foreign decisions. 
So I really, have, I really want to see how he's going to, to, to take this one and try to see how to enforce it. Once they are, if at all, they are sent back to Nigeria, what's going to happen next? The case in Cameroon, yes, the if, will be dropped? If they happen to be sent back to Nigeria and Nigeria is not able to establish that they have committed any offense within Nigeria, I think, or if there is, if unless Nigeria is able to prove that uh, they are, uh, they are an in danger, they, there is a danger, they, they are able to cause any danger within uh, the Nigerian territory, maybe decide to, to tell them that, okay, maybe choose another country for you to, for, for your refuge. So as for now, if they have been deported, I think they have to just allow them go free. All right, Barista Tamfu Richard, member of the Cameroon Bar Association and equally member of the Nigerian Bar. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Babila. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.